who go out and hit the paper? Who's it? You probably don't want to be it. Certainly not in that situation. So temperatures are really brutally cold here also across the Great Lakes. The winds are blowing and they're going to be more of a northerly trajectory over the next couple of days, bringing in additional lake effect snow showers. So we do have uh, some lake effect snow warnings and some advisories across the region. And additional snowfall is going to be quite hefty in a few locations, up to a foot, we think, of snow between now and the end of the day for tomorrow. So you can really see it along the western coast there along the shore of Lake Michigan and we're seeing those snow showers even at this time uh, around Marquette you're probably going to pick up two to five inches over every 12 hour period until we get to Saturday morning and then our winds are going to be changing directions so the ice cover now about 20 percent across the Great Lakes that's greater than all of last season so really significant and Lake Erie in particular you might notice that the snowfall totals aren't going to be as great there the reason why well Lake Erie a little more shallow so that's 58 percent ice covered and expected to be about 80% ice covered as we head towards the end of the weekend. Maria trying to shut things down. And as we go through the afternoon, International Falls, 42 below zero. That's the feels like temperature. Chicago, the day today, you'll feel like it's below zero for pretty much the entire afternoon. More of the same as we get through tomorrow, but I want to draw your attention off to the west. Watch the, the less of the pink here. This is a sign that we're seeing that warm up. Rapid City with a forecast uh, wind chill uh, 35. I think we'll take it as we get from Saturday into Sunday. You can see we're finally above zero as we get into Sunday with those wind chills. So there's an air mass exchange here. We're starting to move things along. So we'll call it not as cold into the weekend, but you're still looking at 20, 30 degree temperature uh, differences in highs. That's going to feel like an incredible warm up. So into early next week, many of us will get that opportunity to return at least closer to average. So what does that look like? Well, Minneapolis at two today, Chicago a high of just 11. Tomorrow, still very cold, single digit high temperatures, International Falls, but you bust out a Above freezing Bismarck as we get from Saturday into Sunday, Chicago up to 30 degrees. Again, 20 degrees warmer than where you're going to be today. That is significant. And even as we get into Monday, temperatures in the mid and upper 30s up into the UP. Escape into the south and the southeast to get away from all of that. But here we are waking up to wind chills uh, way down in Tampa. It uh, feels like in the lower 40s in Miami. But yes, technically speaking, we've sort of uh, seen that those temperatures drop. We will see them come up. We'll talk about that in just a second. But let's give you that wind chill forecast through the day today, starting off into the teens and feeling like the 20s most of the day in Nashville and Atlanta. Uh, but you can see how the wind chill not quite as much of a factor during the day off to the west. We're seeing some uh, some positive changes there in terms of temperatures going up. But even through this weekend, wind chills will be an issue from Charleston to Raleigh, keeping in mind that that is some fresh cold air and it is locked in place, especially off to the east and uh, counting on that northerly wind. All right, tomorrow high still into the 30s from Atlanta to Charleston, just into the upper 20s, Raleigh and Nashville. By Sunday, though, then you're starting to see that uptick. Nashville back into the 40s, so is Atlanta, Dothan and Jackson. Uh, New Orleans into the 50s and 60s. And then by uh, tomorrow morning, though, we still have uh, some very chilly mornings ahead before we see that side significantly warm up. Oh, absolutely. And a strange thing, too, as meteorologists, you know, la this time last week, looking ahead at all the information, knowing that this is what's going to be meteorologically speaking, a spectacular storm and then see the stats to back it up. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, the only question mark there was how close to the shore was it going to get right. and really ended up being optimal for being a huge snow producer for so much of the country. Right. Hit everybody along the coast from Florida all the way up into Maine. Uh, but you, you talk about the one stat, the, the central pressure. This was a headline too. We talk right. about bombogenesis. You probably have heard it ad nauseum <laughs> at this point. Times, right? But the technical yeah. definition is 24 millibars in 24 hours. So that's yeah. what that would look look like if you were sort of graphing the uh, central pressure. Right, but this one blew that out of the water. It went from 1010 millibars down to 951 mm -hmm. in that 24 hour period. So making a very powerful uh, storm and just kind of, yeah, not necessarily record breaking, but really incredible intensification. Right, and no more dramatic uh, visualization of that as you see the storm unfold as sort of a cluster and blob of clouds producing snow and freezing rain across the southeast, Jackie, and then right. wind up, tighten up to this powerhouse 
house of a blizzard. Right, and in this kind of a situation, this type of a storm, that wind field really expanded too, and you can really see the breadth oh, of yeah. it uh, as it moved into the northeast. So here's a look at the radar, and it kind of gives you an idea of how this unfolded as well. We did have some of that icing conditions across parts of the, uh, the southeast, but other than that, this was a snow producer yeah. for everybody. And visually stunning from that, that view from above. So yeah. this is a snapshot of it as it was just off the mid-Atlantic and the northeast coast, the center right there. But look at the footprint of snow that it left behind. Isn't that All amazing? Way down there in South Georgia and northern Florida. And some of that's Incredible. still around today. <laughs> we're waiting for some of that to melt. There's still a little bit left. The wind component, as you were talking about, amazing. 76 mile per hour wind gusts reported at Nantucket. Yeah, so a real calling card of this mm -hmm. uh, storm system for sure and that wind also put all that water and caused all the coastal flooding issues and, and that of course, was a big the, concern. The snow, a foot and a half almost in Cape